the lights to fool me Cause I have seen a God who heals I know when I ask I'll receive it Cause you're not a God who withholds I hear you say just believe me
relationship, not events. So often we think an event is going to change our life. But, but remember when Jesus was talking to a number of his disciples and, and the Spirit of God spoke to him, but some people just called it, uh, thought it thundered. So an event does not change a person. But when, when you're in a relationship, when you're where you can ask questions and be ministered to and minister, that's when life change really happens. And so if you want to be part of LINK, and we're going to be having them right here on campus, we are going to be having some online, and we've got a number of different topics and still uh, not sure about what all the topics will be, and I'll let you know for sure next week on that. But you say, Brad, I do want to be part of LINK, and if you're, if you're watching online, you can do this. Just, just go to edgecc dot us slash link edgecc dot us slash link and you can just say i want to be part of link and if you need child care we will be having child care on wednesdays here we will be having something for revolution here on wednesday nights now not the other nights but on wednesday evening and, and we would really appreciate you uh you signing up for that and it gives me a chance uh you know i know i will be in one small group or two small groups but it gives me a chance to meet people and and really get to know you and it'll give you a chance to meet some other people so so thank you for signing up for link i know that it'll be a great thing for you all right like i said right now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings thank you for your generosity especially during these covid 19 snow days we really need your help and we appreciate your generosity and it's really easy to do just edge cc i'm looking for it up there there we go edge cc uh, just text Ed CC to 77977 or edcc.us uh, ed slash give. Uh, you can give online. If you're making out checks, you can make them out to the edge and send them to 506 Edwards Road, Greenville, South Carolina. Or we also have offering uh, containers here and at the end. But thank you for your generosity. And let's pray and let's believe God today for a really, really great offering. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to give. So we thank you that your word tells us that when we give our offerings, it's just like sowing seed in the ground and it comes back to us in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And I speak over these people like I do every week. If they get good jobs, raises, and promotions on the jobs that they have, Father, I believe they receive supernatural, divinely inspired ideas about new and better things that won't just bless the kingdom, it will bless the whole world. And I thank you that every single need is met abundantly because your people are willing to be obedient and give we thank you for it in jesus name amen god bless you as you give well like i've been telling you for a few weeks we're starting a new series today on marriage it's called extraordinary marriage or how to have an extraordinary marriage and so i've asked the band over these next few weeks to do some love songs because isn't that what marriage is all about? I married her because I was in love with her. Or I married him because I was in love with him. But they're going to do a really exciting song this morning about love or maybe kind of wanted to be in love. So give it up for them as they come and do the song. in your eyes see the thorn twist in your side I wait for you slide of hand and twist of faith a bit of man she makes me wait and I wait without you with or without you, with or without you, through the storm we reach the shore, give it all, but I want more, and I wait.
excited that you chose to tune in and it's been such a long time since we've seen some of you so my prayer today is that something will be said something that will be done that will help us connect even though we're not together physically and uh, li like I said I hope we'll see you again very very soon and like I ask every week and thank you so much for doing this so many of you have but share this on your social media page it really does make a difference and and sometimes we think it, it, it it's, it's not gonna touch anybody or or you know somebody else is doing it it really doesn't matter if I do it but every time someone shares it does make things go up exponentially the number of people that you can reach and you never know who might be watching or who needs to be watching and your share might just be that very thing and it helps us with our mission to create hope by helping people on their journey to a better life through the Lord Jesus Christ so so like I said it may be a little a little thing but it really does make a difference all right I asked the band if they would do that you two song today because uh, we're starting this series about having an extraordinary marriage and and honestly that's just the way it is in a lot of relationships in fact I, I almost thought about having them do another U2 song I still haven't found what I'm looking for uh, but I thought I didn't want to take it quite that far but but honestly that's the way a lot of people feel when it comes to marriage I mean when you ask somebody do you love your spouse automatically the answer is yes but if you talk with them for a while I mean, I have heard this so many times, Brad, they drive me absolutely crazy. And it's like I can't live with them, and I can't live without them. So over the next few weeks, what I want to do is, is bring you some proven truths from the Scriptures that I have both observed and I have practiced. And I promise you, they will help you 
have an extraordinary marriage. And that's what we all want. I mean, no one wants to have a marriage that is miserable. But unfortunately, statistics say, listen to this, that 75 to 80% of all American couples are not happy with their marriage partner. And they say that if I had it to do all over again, I would not marry that particular person. And so when people think like that, it gives way to feelings of apathy and not even trying, and that makes things worse. And, and then if you're not happy, I mean, it opens the door to flirting and affairs and, and divorce. But it doesn't have to be that way. God has a plan for you. He has a plan for your marriage, and it doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be terrible. It doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't even have to be mediocre. God's plan for you is to have an extraordinarily great marriage. In fact, a marriage that's like heaven on the earth. So I believe this is going to be a series that's very, very helpful. Now, today, I'm gearing this particularly to those people that are not married yet but they want to be. So maybe you're just kind of in the observing stage or the flirting stage or the dating stage, or maybe you're even engaged, but you're not married yet. Now, I cannot tell you if a certain person is the one for you. That's between you and God. But I can absolutely, with a surety, tell you if someone is not the one for you. So, so let me encourage you, everybody right now, Text all your single friends and, and, and let them know. Tell them to tune in because God has a plan for their future and uh, um, whether they want to be married for the first time or whether they want to be married again. And here's the key. If we can just learn, learn biblical principles in the beginning and make good decisions concerning our marriage partner, that will take us a long way into having the kind of marriage that God wants us to have and that will last for a lifetime. Now, as we look at some of the scriptures that we're going to look at today and over the next few weeks about making good decisions concerning marriage, it's really easy to say, well, Brad, I just, I just don't buy into that. You know, God's too strict. He's old-fashioned. He really doesn't understand. If he understood, he wouldn't say that. You know, the Bible's just not practical for today. It's outdated it doesn't really apply to us. But, you know, you have to look at things like, like a parent looks at their child. Now, you know, a parent hopefully has more wisdom than their child, and there are things that you tell them to do. There are things that you tell them not to do, and, and it is to protect them. It's to help them. But honestly, most kids, they don't like that. I mean, they want to do what they want to do. But you know what's best for them, so, so you tell them things like, listen, don't play in the street. You know, don't get into a car with a stranger. Don't, don't jump off a, a two-story building using an umbrella as your parachute. Don't throw, don't throw a, a bricks off a bridge on the oncoming cars. Don't do things like that. And you tell them that not to harm them, not to keep them from having any fun. You tell them that because you want to keep them from harm. Well, that's the same way it is with God. He's not out to hurt us. He's not out to keep us from having fun and enjoying life. He is the creator of life. And God wants the best for us, so every time he tells us to do something or not to do something, it is to protect us from harm. He knows what's best for us. And so whatever he says, he knows that the end result is going to be for our good. Now, I want to start this morning by looking at a passage of Scripture from 2 Corinthians let me give you a little background about Corinth. Corinth was a very, uh, very cosmopolitan, free-thinking, modern city. Population was around 100,000 people. It was a coastal city. And so a lot of merchants, a lot of uh, sea travelers from different countries came there. Many of them wound up settling there. So there were people that were very, very diverse, Many different beliefs, many different cultures. It was also polytheistic. They worshipped a lot of different gods. There was a big temple to Apollo there. Up in the mountains above Corinth was the great temple to Aphrodite, the goddess of love, which had at one time over a thousand temple prostitutes. And, and people would come there and they would pay a, a temple tax or give a gift. And, and they would have sex with these prostitutes as a form of worship. And that's how the priest 
kept up that temple and were able to fund their lavish lifestyle. So that's kind of a picture of Corinth. Well, Paul traveled there on one of his missionary journeys. He preached the risen Jesus. People got saved. He established a church. And the church was made up, listen, of Corinthian people and their beliefs and their cultures. You know, and belief and culture is not easy to change. You say, well, what is culture? Well, culture is just the way people view and do life. It's the behaviors, the beliefs, the values that we just kind of accept without thinking that we pass on from one generation to the next. So when you look at it like that, it's really easy to see how the people in the church of Corinth, because they were very diverse, came out of very different backgrounds, it's easy to see how that they might have a different view on marriage in a different view on relationships. And that's the reason Paul wrote some of the things that he did. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. Now this is out of the, uh, the New Living Translation. It says, don't team up. Say don't. Say don't team up. Let's say that again. Don't team up. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. I mean, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Now, if you grew up in church like I did, you probably heard at some point, don't marry a non-Christian, don't go into business with a non-Christian. And the King James Version, I mean, it really gives a great word picture. It talks about don't be yoked together with people that are not believers in Jesus. And, and, and a yoke, it was made out of wood and it had two holes in it or, or you know, made with other pieces of wood or whatever and put together with, with, um, with, with other pieces of wood or leather or metal or something like that. And animals of equal kind, equal strength would be harnessed together in this yoke. And if they were equal strength and equal kind, they could pull a plow in a straight line and then the farmer could plant his seed and, and reap a harvest. Listen, no wise farmer would ever think of yoking up two incompatible animals. No wise farmer would ever think about yoking up a deer on one side and a tiger on the other side. They're not the same type, they're not the same size, not the same strength, not the same temperament. I mean, if it didn't kill the farmer trying to yoke up the tiger, he would definitely kill the deer. Totally incompatible. Well, that's what Paul's talking about here. He said, listen, you've got to be smart in the beginning. Make sure you team up, you yoke up with the right kind of person. Now, I always have this. People say, Brad, I'm already married. And I'm already married to an unbeliever. What do I do? Well, I'll tell you, that can be very, very difficult, and I promise you we'll talk about that later. But today, I'm trying to save Christians from drama and trauma of teaming up with the wrong kind of people. Don't team up with unbelievers. It means don't bond. Don't voluntarily bond with someone who has different morals, who has different values, who has different beliefs than you. Because if you do, they will influence your judgment. So you've got to be wise about the kind of people that you allow to influence your life. And that would certainly be true about a married partner. In the Old Testament, it talks about Solomon, how he was such a wise man. But at the end of his life, the Scripture says Solomon loved many wives and all these pagan wives, and they influenced his thinking and turned his heart away from God. So it means to be wise. There are certain people that are not good for you, and if you are teamed up with someone whose core values are different than yours, there's going to be a struggle anytime major decisions have to be made. So why would you do that to somebody? Yeah, but Brad, we're in love. There's nobody in the world that's ever been in love the way we're in love. I mean, we're just, we're, we're, we're just so in love. Solomon thought he was in love too. And the scripture says that his wives turned his heart away from God. So what I want to do this morning is just give you some questions that will help you 
in teaming up with the right person. These are questions that you should ask if you're just checking somebody out, if you are in the flirting stage, if you're dating them, or if you're already engaged. You say, well, Brad, what if they're the wrong person and I'm already engaged? It would be better to break off that engagement now than it would be to marry that person who is not right for you. So here's the first question. This is the most this, this is the one that you really need to ask. The first question is, do they love Jesus? Say Jesus. Jesus. Do they love Jesus? I had someone come to me one time, and, and, and really it was after the service, and, uh, and they, they were telling me all about this new boyfriend they had. And he was this, and he was that. He had a, just such a great job and a nice car, and he was really physically fit. And, and I said, well, you know, that boy, that, that just sounds great. I can't wait to meet him. She said, well, it's probably going to be a while before you meet him because uh, he, he, he won't come to church. And I, I, I just, you know, I was just... Just asking, I said, well, now, does he love Jesus? Well, Brad, he's a real spiritual person. And um, he believes Jesus was a great teacher. And so I, I didn't want to get into any kind of argument again, but I just asked him again. I said, does he love Jesus? Well, Brad, he's a real moral person. I thought, what in the world does that mean? He's really moral. If you cannot give a definitive answer about whether somebody loves Jesus or not, that's a red flag. Are you still here or are you going home? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way. Yes, the truth and the life. No one can get to the Father except by means of me. That's kind of hard to misinterpret. Yeah, but Brad, they're, they're, they're such a good person. They're, they're kind to their mother. Or, uh, one guy one time told me, he said, well, well, you know, she was raised in another religion, Brad, but, but, but she's really spiritual. And uh, she acts better than a lot of Christians I know. But now, see, this is exactly what I was talking about. It is so easy, so easy, so easy for us to allow our, our thinking, our worldly thinking to begin to believe, well, God's too strict. His word is outdated. It, it really doesn't matter what God's word says. This is how I think. This is how culture is. And so we justify our actions by our feelings, by our emotions, and by what culture says rather than what Scripture says. It's so easy. It's so easy. And it doesn't matter what generation. It's been like this since the beginning. It's so easy for us to become deceived. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, out of the Living Bible, it says, Beware then of your own heart. So it's talking about us. I mean, beware, dear brothers, lest you find that they too, your own heart, are evil and unbelieving and are leading you away from the living God. So, speak to each other about these things every day. While there's still time, so none of you will become hardened against God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Being blinded by the glamour of sin. Now, that word blinded there means deceived. It's so easy. It's so easy to become deceived. You know, we begin to think this way, or we've got a friend, or we've got a counselor, or we've got somebody that says this, and it sounds good. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. A lot of people are doing that. Well, everybody's doing that. We've got to be smart, or the glamour of sin can deceive us. Yeah, but Brad, she's so hot. Hell is hot. And if they don't love Jesus, at some point, you're going to have issues down the road. They're not right for you. Don't team up with them. You don't need to, yeah, but Brad, I can change him. No, you can't. Yeah, but Brad, I've been praying for him. Good. Wait till something happens and then start. <laughs> All right. Secondly, secondly, secondly. Do they celebrate God's blessing in your life? Do they celebrate God's blessing in your life? Proverbs 11, verse 10 says, The whole city celebrates when, God, when, when the godly succeed. So I've seen this happen so many times. I used to have a boss, and I really liked him. I enjoyed hanging out with him and his wife. But after a while, I noticed that they never celebrated anything good anybody did. I mean, including me. You know, they were always very quick to point out bad things. 
but they never said anything good. Never once, never once did I ever hear him say, hey, man, that was great. Or you did a good job, or that was a great thing, or, or whatever like that. It was just kind of like he was tolerating. But you know, the right person will always celebrate you. The wrong person will be jealous. They'll be mad at your success. And they'll be glad it's your failure. Three. Will they stick with me? Will they stick with me? Will they stick with me? Proverbs 17, 17 says, Friends love through all kinds of weather, and families stick together in all kinds of trouble. The right person will stay with you and be in your corner when everybody else bolts. You say, well, well how do I know? How, how do I know? Well, if you've ever gone through any tough time, you ever gone through any difficulty, ever gone through any time of struggle, you can see what's up with that person. And all of us have examples of this. I mean, 2020 was a year of sif sifting. You know, and it showed many of us who, are really, who really our friends were. But the right person will always stay with you no matter what. Question number four. Are they overly critical? Now, this is really important. You know, everybody's critical to a, to a certain extent. I mean, we're, we all are. We're, we're, you know, sinful beings. We, we've all fallen short of God's glory. So, so all of us get critical at times. And, but I know a lot of people in life feel like it's their mission to point out everybody else's flaws. I mean, it's like they love giving people a tongue lashing. And, and a lot of times people do this on social media. They just kind of blast everybody, just blanket blast people. Listen, here's a good rule of thumb. This will help you if you don't get anything else. Unless someone has given you permission to speak into their life. Let me say that again. Unless someone has given you permission, say permission. Unless someone has given you permission to speak into their life, your words of condemnation and criticism are going to fall on deaf ears. They're not going to listen to it. The Apostle Paul said we should speak the truth in love. And some people say, well, that's what I'm doing. I love them so much that I'm going to tell them what to do. <laughs> love earns the right to speak. You're getting something today. Love earns earns the right to speak love is built on relationship not simply on acquaintance when we uh we first started the edge we started out at east side high school and uh one sunday morning one you know wasn't very long in fact i was teaching on marriage it just started a new series on marriage and we had a couple that visited came with a someone that had been attending and they were from Asheville, and you know met them before the service and and of course, we were glad that they were here, and you know, did did the best we could to try to welcome them. And and then after they, uh, then the next day, I wrote them an email, like I always do, I, I like every guest, and I thanked them for coming, and I invited them back. Well, the day after the email, I got a three ma three page email back telling me all the things that were wrong about our church. The worship was wrong. The announcements were wrong. The, uh, presentation was wrong the message was wrong what I said was wrong Robin was wrong I was wrong and, and you listen everybody needs to be criticized I mean it, we learn from that but unless someone has given you permission to speak into their life your criticism is not going to be very well received the scripture says in Proverbs 27 6 wounds from a friend are trusted because you trust that person but if you don't know somebody or if you've just met somebody, just keep your criticism to yourself because it's going to fall on deaf ears. So we're talking about having the right people in our life. Do they love Jesus? Do they celebrate God's blessings? Will they stick with you? Are they overcritical? And then five, does their lifestyle reflect Christ? You know, sometimes this gets really sticky. And yes, we're under grace. And under grace, all things are lawful to us. But listen, 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 listen. Not everything is good for us, smart for us, or wise for us. All things are lawful to us, but not everything is good. Not everything is smart. Not everything is wise. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, this is out of the Message Bible. It says, just because something is technically legal, this is so important here, 
Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it's spiritually appropriate. If I went around doing whatever I thought I could get by with, I'd be a slave to my whims. A lot of people are like that. They're just a slave to their whims. And, and they act. Now listen, please take this in the way that I'm saying it, and I'll, I'll explain in a minute. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of Christians just act stupid. They act stupid. And, and st stupid means given to unintelligent decisions or acts. It means acting in an unintelligent or careless manner. It doesn't mean that they're unintelligent. It means they're acting that way, and that perfectly describes a lot of people. I don't care. I don't care. They may not say that, but their actions bring that up. I don't care. Well, don't you know what that'll do to you? So? Well, don't you know what that'll do to your marriage? So? Don't you know what that does to your Christian witness? I can do whatever I want. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 says, It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. We are free. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us how love acts. Love cares more for others than ourselves. Love does not strut its freedom. Love doesn't have a swell head. Love doesn't force itself on others. Love is not about me first. So they say they're a Christian? Well, you've got to ask. Does their life line up with what they say they believe? Now, here's another question. I don't have this written down, but here's one. Are you, are you the right person? Do you love Jesus? Do you celebrate God's blessings in the lives of others? Do you stick with people? Are you overly critical? Does your life reflect what you say you believe? You know, if you ask these questions, whether about yourself or whether someone that you want to date or marry, and be honest, I tell you, your answers will be the beginning to put you on the road to an extraordinary marriage. And here's a scripture I didn't, I, I didn't, I looked this one up too late. Robin shared it with me yesterday, and I just wanted to, to read it. But this is Psalm 139, 23, and 24. And we talked about this before, but it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything you find in me that makes you sad. And lead me along the path to everlasting life. If you will honestly pray that, God, just search me. Look at me. And, and it's so easy to let our emotions and our feelings and, you know, and hormones and all, it's so, so easy to let that influence our decisions. And we put God's word over here somewhere and we think, well, you know, I'll, I'll get to that maybe, but, you know, it just really doesn't apply, it doesn't apply to me or it's just... Brad, it just can't really mean that, or it's too old-fashioned. You know, I, I, I'm just the kind of person that believes that I'm going to put God's Word first in my life. And when He says something to do or He says something not to do, I have to believe it is for my good. And that He's not out to hurt me. He's not out to keep me from having fun. He is out to make my life better now next week it's valentine's day so uh, i'm going to talk about love in marriage and uh, uh the, the the title of next week is i will always love you and boy how many times have we said that how many divorce courts have uh, have heard that but if you need prayer in your life or whether you're watching online or whether you're here this morning just text the word new new the 623-999-9020, and I promise that we will pray for you. And let me pray for all of you right now. Father, this is, a, this is such an important subject. No misery. 
like relationship misery. No pain like the pain of the person you think you love or they said that they loved you. But there's no bliss like when it's right. And I know that you want us to have an extraordinary marriage. And so I pray for everyone that's watching today. So many out there that are in dating relationships or wanting to be married or wanting someone in their life. Father, let them ask wise questions. Bring that right person across their path that they can answer yes to. Father, I pray for those that are already married. Sir, so just minister to them and let them be the kind of person that will influence their spouse in a godly way. Work in all of our lives. Test our hearts. Search us. If there's anything in us that makes you sad, reveal it to us so we can change it. Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to sign up for our link, edcc.us slash link. God bless you. High five virtually, four or five people. Tell them you love them. Don't forget to text all these single friends. Tell them to tune in, and uh, we will see you next week about I Will Always Love You.